Hello there, my name is Lukram and welcome to this uh, video of tips and tricks. So as you probably have guessed, uh, I'm gonna be talking about the blocks you see behind me here, the B blasters, the EMP energy shields, the thruster blocks, the quantum rudder, the altitude sensor is a bit of a weird one but there's a reason for it the gyro stabilizer and the gyro so let's get right into it shall we so first thing on the list are the blasters these being the smart blaster and the normal blaster so the first thing you gotta know about these new weapons is that these two don't have any recoil at all so this is extremely useful when you have a very light ship and for example uh, you start shooting and the smart blaster decides to aim in a different direction and it throws you off completely. So uh, yeah, you will no longer have this problem if you're using the blasters. The other thing that's very important that you'd probably like to know is that the fire rate when you have a fully charged battery on these dudes is about one shot every 0 0.15 seconds so we can demonstrate this by going into the settings and setting the delay to 0 0.15 and now they will still shoot kind of at the same time but the normal blaster will be delayed by one shot and yeah that is very useful because with that you can instead of setting it to 0.15 you can do a half so that would be around 0.08 and now you have essentially double your fire rate all right next up is the emp launcher this boy right here and you can see i have the rocket launcher on the other side for a comparison. If you look at, at the recharge rate, you can see that the MP is a bit slower than the rocket. It's about 6 seconds on cooldown for the MP and yeah, 5 seconds for the uh, rocket. Uh, yeah, the other thing you should probably know is that I've already tried to piston accelerate the EMP but the results are negligible, so I wouldn't recommend it. If you would like to fire a lot of EMPs, this is a binary counter and a decipher that cycles through 16 EMP launchers and uh, that is the fire rate it has. Alright, uh, next up are the shields and this here is a concept I built uh, and this is the maximum amount of shields you can stack in, on top of each other without them overlapping and looking weird and cut off. So yeah, it's quite a lot of shields, uh, About it's two in every, every direction, but I don't think shields are gonna be a a broken thing mainly because uh, you can still add a bunch of weapons and chew through the HP of the shield or uh, you could use uh, physical projectiles as the energy shield does not block physical projectiles it only blocks uh, projectiles such as the bullets, rockets, bombs and such, but not TNT uh, crashing into something or most importantly uh, dispensed blocks like the metal crate. So I'm expecting a meta change back towards the metal crate launchers. But uh, yeah, another thing with the shields, as you can see there's two colors in it the outer color is is defined by the secondary color of your shield and the inner color which is the color shown when they when they uh, are intersected by something like the floor there is defined by the 
primary color. Obviously you can change the different parameters with the sliders and make a lot of things. The biggest shield you have has a diameter of about 20 meters is uh, 20.5 meters so this uh, number is actually quite useful. Next up are the thrusters. Thrusters in question are the space thruster and the rocket engine. As you can see the space thruster has a cost of 3 power cores, weights 15 kilograms and has a power of 250 which is a little bit less than the dragon jet which also costs 3 power cores but the dragon jet weighs uh, twice as much and takes up thrice as much volume. So the space thrusters are a little bit less powerful than the dragon engine but they are more compact. I also made some calculations and the space thruster can push up vertically 89.3 kilograms. So that's quite useful to know. So you can make a little bit of math to know how many thrusters you're gonna need to push up against one G. Obviously depending on the weight of your craft. So for example, my little ship here weighs 220.5 kilograms. So I take 220.5 divided by 89.3 which is the carrying capacity of the space thruster and then I get 2.46 that means I would need 2.4 thrusters so the minimum I would require to lift this thing is 3 thrusters alright now with the rocket engines. They are huge and also provide quite a bit of power. As you can see the rocket engine costs 20 power cores and it weighs 100 kilograms and has 1800 power. It takes a bit for it to ramp up to its full power but once it gets there it can carry about 642 kilograms upwards. The previous strongest one, this one, the large ship, could carry about 285 kilograms. Next up is the quantum rudders and as you can see there's the quantum rudder right there. It lights up when it uh, encounters resistance and yeah right now I have my controls on the gyro but we are going to disable them and yeah we have the strength at 2 and the turn rate at 0 so we're gonna see how that affects things and yeah when you have the controls and it's being activated it triggers that beautiful animation and yeah as we can see uh, the turn rate is pretty pretty slow uh, and yeah that's because of the slow turn rate so we can up that to the maximum and that is gonna change drastically how fast we can pitch this obviously scales with the amount of quantum rudders you have, so it is quite nice. Uh, the other thing of the quantum rudder is the strength. The strength affects two things. It affects first how strongly it redirects the momentum of your craft and the second is the drag it has. So we're gonna run up and get to max speed at strength 2 and we're gonna see and compare it to a minimum strength. Alright, so this seems to be about the max speed around 230 km per hour and we can quite easily change directions. Let's go now with the minimum strength. Alright, 
it seems we're reaching the top speed as you can see it's significantly higher and acceleration is also stronger however uh, the turning is now back to what it felt like when turning rate was zero because it no longer has enough strength to redirect the spaceship so yeah you're gonna have to balance that between maneuverability and speed all right so uh, next up is the altitude sensor and you might think well that's a bit odd the altitude sensor is not new but it did get a new feature within the space map as you can see the altitude right now says 47 meters and if we go outside once we don't have any gravity it says max that's now because the altitude sensor within the space map uh, says maximum when you have zero g's and if you are wondering where is it measuring this altitude from if we go up here all right we can poke our head a little bit through here and this point right here is about the center of the measurement points in the Gagina 9 station so with this information you can do some very interesting stuff because you can automate processes when entering or leaving the atmosphere so uh, the way you would do that is you go to the settings and set the altitude to 2000 which is the max and then trigger below and that will make it so that it will give an output to whatever you'd like like for example uh, let's say these two activate those space thrusters uh, yeah you could automate quite a lot of stuff with this just as a proof of concept once it says max uh, they get turned off all right so next up are the gyro stabilizers and as you can see this little bodies right here are keeping me straight but the very interesting part about them is that you can deactivate them quite easily I might add by simply running an input through them and it doesn't matter if it's a positive or negative input to reverse its state so right now they are set to be on by default but if I press space uh, you can see well you can kind of see there you can see they turn off visually and that indicates that they are off and if I grab the negative input they also get turned off that's quite useful I would say but it's not the most useful block in this update that would be the next entry next entry is the gyro block right so as you can probably tell I got gyros here we got one in the bottom one in the back and one hidden in the side and those gyros are there because they are stabilizing me in all the axes so basically the strongest feature of gyros are the rotational dampening that they have and we can show that by utilizing these weights right here so uh, right now if I turn and stop turning it stops pretty much immediately and that is because this gyro is set to max strength and it's dampening my rotation whenever I'm not uh, turning if we set it to the minimum strength of 0.1 you can see that once I start turning and let go uh, I keep on turning so to fully take advantage of the gyros you set them to be very strong uh, keep in mind that if you are not heavy enough you will be a bit jittery so just play with it a little bit to find the perfect strength usually if your build is heavy enough you can just set them to strength 10 and the reason I don't have the inputs 
in the gyro itself and have it separately in the logic block, it's because I want to give it an input of 0 0.08, which is 8%. So what this does is that it tells it to rotate with 8% strength of its uh, current strength and that's how I managed to rotate at a nice controllable pace and also taking advantage of the rotational dampening of the strength 10 gyro. If I were to place the controls here I would rotate extremely fast and I don't think anyone can really maneuver something like this. So another thing you could do with this, since they stabilize a lot with strength 10, is stabilize your builds a plane, for example. So instead of compromising the looks to make it work, you can hide a gyro inside to, well, make it work. Alright then, that's going to be it. There's obviously quite a lot more things you could do with all the new blocks, but if you've got any questions you would like me to answer, feel free to comment them down below. Also, uh, coming real soon, it's a logic guide I'm working on, so I'm going to be showing how logic works and simple circuits to improve your builds with, and of course, if you got any specific logic problem you need help with, be sure to let me know and I will try to help you out. Alright then, have a fun time and bye!